You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Eddie Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is time for another Set Apart to Serve story. I'm excited about this one. A local guy here in St. Louis who has prepared for serving as a pastor, gone through seminary education and formation now with excitement about serving as a pastor that you can see in photos. I hope we get to share a photo <laughs> with you with the, the podcast episode that really just demonstrates that, but I think you're going to hear it in his voice today as well. The Reverend Adonis King will share his story in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, the Reverend Adonis King, Pastor Donnie, from uh, a recent graduate of Concordia Seminary here in St. Louis. He serves as Associate Pastor at St. Trinity Lutheran Church and St. John Lutheran Church in St. Louis. He's missionary to the city. Pastor Donnie, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I am so intrigued by your story. I grew up here in St. Louis, and I want to know more about when you started considering becoming a pastor. When did you start thinking about going to seminary and training and and preparing to become a pastor? Oh, wow. So that question may take up the entire show. If <laughs> That's, that's okay. fine. Well... The story of me considering and wanting to become a pastor um, was most definitely nothing that I was considering and wanting to do. It started with me just being at a, like a crossroads in my life, basically. And I was praying about, God, do I continue, you know, to work? Do I start my own business because I've been doing business for almost 20 years at the time? Or do I go back to college? Like, what is it, you know, do I really need to be doing with my life? So I grew up with like fasting and praying. And that was like a part of the culture of my background. And it was then that I was driving down Clayton Road and I made a wrong turn and when I made the wrong turn it said Concordia Seminary and I was like Concordia Seminary like what is this so I pulled up because it looked like a school and I pulled up and there was a guy walking across the campus and I was like, what kind of place is this? And he was like, oh, it's a college. It's a school for pastors. And I was like, it's a school for pastors. So I went inside the administrative building and I asked again, like, you know, what type of school was this? And they said, well, it was a school for pastors. It's a school for Lutheran pastors. And I didn't know what a Lutheran was. And I was like, okay. They was like, well, you know, are you a Lutheran? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then they was like, well, there's a school for Lutheran pastors. They said, are you, do you have a bachelor's degree? They said, it's a master's program. And I said, no, I only have an associate's degree. So they said, well, here is a, a business card for you to go and visit a Lutheran, you know, church and just find out and learn about Lutheranism. And they was like, you have to, you know, be a Lutheran at least two years before you even come here. You have to have a bachelor's degree. And you have to, you know, be a, be a Lutheran or whatever. So I had went to the church. I met the guy, gave him the call, and I told him, you know, that I had stumbled across Concordia Seminary. They gave me a call, and I'm just trying to find out about, you know, becoming a Lutheran. And he said, well, you know, I can give you some instruction classes about, you know, being a Lutheran. So I went through some instruction classes with him for literally, like, two years because I had so many questions. And then in that time, I went back to school. I got my bachelor's degree. I became Lutheran. 
went back up to the school like four years later because I was going to school like part time. And the administration and everything had changed. I went in, I said, hey, you guys, you know, told me that I had to have a bachelor's degree and I had to become a Lutheran in order to go here. And they was like, who are you? <laughs> Nobody knew who I was. They was like, it's a guy here, you know, saying somebody told him to, you know, come back, this, that, or whatever. And past the pastor at the time that gave me the instruction classes, he had went up there with me because you had to have like all of these recommendations and all of this stuff. And even when I was going back and telling them that I still wasn't sure why I was going there, I just felt that God wanted me there. And as I was getting my bachelor's degree and as I was studying, that was always in the back of my mind that I was supposed to be at Concordia for whatever reason. I didn't know if it was going to be to be a pastor, just to grow in my faith, to learn more about God. And I was just doing it blindly. And here we are. <laughs> Absolutely. Here we are. <laughs> Tell us about your seminary formation. What was it like going? I mean, you, 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 you went through a lot in several years, you know, getting your bachelor's degree, becoming Lutheran, learning all of these new things. What was that like transitioning into seminary? And what was that seminary formation like for you? Seminary formation, well, I like how they gave like a holistic formation because we had these Winkle groups that talked about like your health and your family and what it may look like, you know, to be a pastor. You hear all of the different stories of how the professors were pastors. So it gives you a lot to consider along with the academic side of it, of knowing how, and well, not how deep, but how passionate they are about the scriptures and how well they want you to be able to study the scriptures. And it was, it was kind of, it was very difficult. I mean, a lot of the guys that was there with us our first years, you know, didn't graduate with us, unfortunately. And it was very testing, especially the vicarage year. They, I went from making an income because I was a second career guy. I wasn't, you know, like majority of the guys that go to Concordia coming straight out of college and perhaps living at home, not married, don't have kids. So I had to rely on my faith to carry me through during the internship year. There's this like mandatory trust that you live off the income of what your intern are going to pay you. So I wasn't supposed to have like a second job on the side, which I would have been totally fine with, but they wanted me to trust God. <laughs> and I was like, okay, God, I need you to show up and show out and Mortgage bills start kind of getting behind. And then all of a sudden, I receive a check in the mail from a donor from the college. And all of a sudden, you know, it'll be a gift come from somebody. And then I get, and it was like, okay, God, you are really making this. Like, I mean, he just was making himself more, more real just through that entire process. So, yeah. What would you say was your favorite class through your seminary education and formation? Favorite class was 
probably the preaching classes, the homiletics. Yeah, I had a some great professors that could turn your those first year trying to learn to preach. I mean, they just are terrible. They are horrible. But they would be so encouraging that they would use what you said and add something to it to make you feel like you could have said that. So you will kind of still have like some ownership in it to like boost your confidence. And yeah, and we I had Dr. Schmidt. He had just make a paint a picture in your head when he's preaching and teaching and the way he talked on the board it was like he he thought in diagrams because he would draw on the board and he would have a box here and a box here and a box here and then talk about like how all of the boxes like overlap and just to see that in action and then get put on paper was just an awesome thing. We're talking with Pastor Johnny King, recent graduate of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. He's associate pastor at St. Trinity Lutheran Church and St. John Lutheran Church here in St. Louis. We'll continue the conversation in just a moment right here on The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Oh, this one in toy set is really, really fun. It is. We could pretend it's like real life. Kids love to play, and play that points to Jesus is a big part of a child's faith journey. Wooden toys from Wicking Vicar do just that, growing the faith through play. Wicking Vicar's children's church play set lets little ones delve into the divine service, and the children's advent wreath is a safe way for kids to make the advent tradition their own. Solid wood and heirloom quality for children ages three and up. Order yours today at wickingvicar.com and click on Wooden Toys in the menu bar. This Christmas, gift the children in your life faith-building wooden toys from Wicking Vicar. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with Pastor Donnie King. He's a recent graduate of Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, uh, serving with St. Trinity Lutheran Church and St. John Lutheran Church in St. Louis, Missouri, as missionary to the city. Pastor, what was that process like of preparing to receive a call and then receiving a call to serve right here in your hometown? What was that like going through that that call process experience? It was extremely emotional. As I was going through the, the process and just the idea. I mean, I'm just thinking about it make me want to cry. Just to see the grace that God can use anybody and to receive the call. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I just, I just get joy when I think about it. Man, it was, it was humbling. It was satisfying. It was Hallelujah. Nothing that you can say higher than that feeling moment. Because when I stepped foot on campus, there wasn't on my agenda to be a pastor, but it was on his agenda. It was on God's agenda for me to, to be a pastor. And I look back and I see that he carried me to the car. 
and placed me where he wanted me to be placed in has just been just satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that so much for you. And uh, you were just recently ordained. Tell us about the call that you have to St. Trinity and St. John. What what do you get to do? Somebody had asked me when I left Vicarage, what was the highlight Vicarage? And I had said, you know, I'm getting paid to play. I was doing so much with kids and sharing Jesus and running around and playing basketball and taking them to camps. And I'm like, this don't feel like work. I mean, this is just joyful and happy. And now that I've received the call, I'm doing a lot with you. And I'm preaching, I'm teaching. I'll be preaching and teaching at both places, but just being with the children and spending time with them is like what I would do for free for, you know, just to be doing it. And I get a check with it. It's like just an amazing thing. I'd have never thought that if somebody was to say, if you can do anything you want to do, and get paid for, what would it be? And you can say, well, if I could just go play every day, have fun, and get paid to take care of my family, that that would be a realistic thing. But it's a realistic thing. I mean, God does it. I mean, it just... So you get to preach, teach, and share the good news of Jesus with children every day right here in St. Louis. Uh, speaking of children, how has your family adapted to this recent change, to th this whole vocational change, going to seminary and now serving as a pastor? How has this worked out for your family going through this whole process? Well, it's actually worked out really well. Besides the like financial aspect of it, before I was doing this, I used to work 60, 70 hours but those hours was like 12 to 12 and like never seeing my family. And now I spend much more time with my kids. I get to take them to work with me, take them to church, take them to activities. Yeah, so it's been a really healthy transition and very fruitful for my household. What are you looking forward to as you look as, as you look forward in the, in your call with the people that you get to work with every day, sharing the love of Jesus with them? What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to before I just get with the kids and like with the people that I'm sharing Jesus with. I'm also looking forward to like learning from like. Pastor Dave, the senior pastor, because he has like 30 plus years in ministry. Then to be able to go to the other church over at Morgan Ford, I got another mentor that I'll be able to be just kind of just be learning from and just seeing and observing like their gifts, their talents and how they've been in ministry for so long. And then just taking what they've learned from the mistakes and the things that they've seen and then applying it to myself and then just doing it with the children and doing it with the adults. And so that's, that's an exciting part for me because I just, I admire them guys for all the things that they've done. And so, yeah. Having had a, a positive experience going through seminary, your seminary education and formation, how are you now encouraging others to consider becoming pastors or other church workers as well? So I'm really, I'm new to my call and everything, 
So maybe some years from now, I will have like a strategic plan or answer or a guy like give me that. But right now I'm just being who I am in Christ, sharing and teaching and hopefully and prayerfully just the joy that they see that I have in serving them, they would be able to see it and that it's just become contagious to where they will see themselves saying, you know, I, I want to do something like that. You mentioned that homiletics is your favorite class when you were in seminary. What have you been able to translate into how you're able to preach and teach now? How are you using all those skills, those homiletic skills in your call now? I'm trying to be diverse. I guess the way he taught was like, keep your eyes open because you never know like what you can use in a sermon. And I'm not a singer, but I've preached it, started sermons with a song. I've brought in a drum and started a sermon with a drum. I've whistled in the middle of a sermon, a familiar tune. Some been very low. Some I've seemed like I've screamed <laughs> the whole sermon. <laughs> so just I'm just learning, just going with it, and just trying to see. I still try to make sure I see my sermons to uh, other people because that was something that he encouraged us to do, you know. Let other people read your sermon to see, like, if you could add something, take something away, see if you communicate and clearly maybe you missed something that another set of eyes can see. So, yeah, just just trying to lean on other people as well to know that I still need help. Always learning, always growing. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Very good. Well, Pastor King, thank you so much for spending this time with us, sharing your story about becoming a student at Concordia Seminary and now a new pastor, fresh out of seminary, serving as a missionary to the city here in St. Louis with St. Trinity Lutheran Church and St. John Lutheran Church. Thanks for being our guest on The Coffee Hour. Hi, hey, thanks for having me. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. You can learn more about Set Apart to Serve by visiting lcms.org slash SAS. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. <laughs>